Hey guys, this tutorial video is going to be on static equilibrium problem and how, well, the defining components of a static equilibrium problem and how to tackle a static equilibrium, e equilibrium question. So, static equilibrium, we'll first kind of define what it is. So you must have heard these words before, both of them, you should have. Static means stationary. And it doesn't mean like, you know, um, an object is still or not moving. It just means that the object has no acceleration. A car could be moving at constant velocity, but constant velocity means that there is no acceleration. When there's no acceleration, that means that the system or the car is static. <clears throat> Equilibrium means that the, um, the system whatever you define your system has, has no unbalanced force within it, okay? So, basically, there is no unbalanced force, meaning there's no um, forces that can cause accelerations, which keeps the system static, hence static equilibrium. Okay, so the way how we'll sort of um, approach, or kind of analyze what static equilibrium is, is through Newton's laws, if you remember that. So the first law, so laws of motion, Newton's laws of motion. First, does anyone remember it? Well, the first law is states that an object will stay at rest until Un or unless an external unbalanced force acts upon that object. If an exter external unbalanced force acts upon that object, then motion will be created. However, in a static equilibrium question, re remember, we know that there is no... Sorry, let me see if I can focus this. Okay, sorry. Just had to refocus the camera, couldn't see anything. So, yeah, remember, in a static equilibrium problem, there is no acceleration, right? And um, which means there's no exter uh, external unbalanced force acting in the system. Therefore, in a static equilibrium system, we know that there is the object will stay at constant velocity. Therefore, we can assume in a static equilibrium system. There is no unbalanced external force. So this kind of leads us to our second, a good segue into our second law. If there's no external unbalanced force acting within the system, that means there is no acceleration. So our acceleration is equal well, is not equal, sorry, acceleration is not equal to any number greater than zero. Therefore, acceleration of the system is equal to zero, greater or less than. Right? And for the third law, we know that I don't really need to define this, it's the famous one. Um, for every sort of force, there is an equal and opposite um, force, equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. And the best way to show this is through a problem. And we need this sort of reaction force to keep the system in static equilibrium. If that reaction force for some reason is less or greater in magnitude than the initial force, then of course our system will not be in static equilibrium. Okay, so as sort of a first little problem here. So we have the, um, the upper arm segment with the bicep and the forearm. So the weight of the forearm 
is kind of create is creating a moment a negative moment at the elbow which we'll need to calculate right because basically it's being weighed down you see at our elbow here it's creating a negative moment if remember if we think back the way how we kind of know if it's a positive or a negative moment is if we define it by our um, system here so a positive moment is if the rotation is created in a counterclockwise manner so like this but the weight of the forearm is creating a negative moment at the elbow causing the forearm to go like that so question is to maintain static equilibrium what is the magnitude of the force needed to be produced by the bicep muscle with a lever arm of 0 0.03 meters so the lever arm we can just label from here to here perpendicular distance so we gotta first calculate what the um, moment is which the forearm is producing if we remember that we could start you know what start over here um, so we know moment is equal to force magnitude of the force multiplied by the lever arm or the moment arm which is the perpendicular distance so the force that the forearm or the weight of the forearm is, 50, is given as 50 newtons so 50 newtons times the perpendicular distance here which is 0 0.12 meters this will give us a grand total of one point sorry let me just write this properly one point eight newton meters correct and since this is creating a negative moment it'll be negative one point eight newton meters right so since we have this component we know this equate this system is in static equilibrium now we have enough information to figure out the magnitude of the force of the bicep that needs to be produced in order to keep this system in static equilibrium. So that's step one. Step two. So we know it's the moment is equal to now we're cal calculating moment of bicep. We know the moment is equal to 1.8 newton meter, right? Why do we know it's 1.8 newton meter meters? Well, remember that this whole system is in static equilibrium. This moment is equal and opposite to the bicep moment because the bicep is counteracting this negative moment created by the forearm because it needs to keep the system in static e equilibrium the opposite to a negative moment is a positive moment in the same magnitude defined by Newton's third law remember that and review that if you're having um, problems with it we use the same moment because it was equal and opposite to the moment calculated before this is used in order to keep the system in static equilibrium so let's do that now so this is equal to we don't know the force yet this is what we're trying to find but we are given the moment arm 0 0.03 so if we do meters. 0 0.03 divide that out and then anything we do on that side we have to do on this side meters so the force is equal to 1.8 divided by 0 0.03 is equal to oh sorry
sorry, you didn't see that, is equal to 60 newtons. So therefore, the bicep, the magnitude of force that is needed to be produced by the bicep with a lever arm of 0 0.03 is 60 newtons. The 60 newtons is used to counteract the weight of the forearm to produce an equal and opposite moment to keep the system to keep the system's acceleration at zero. Okay, I'm going to be coming out with a next video of a harder example with reaction forces and so just that's a little more complicated. Um so stay tuned for that. So what we did we first found the moment of at the weight of the forearm. Um, then we used that same moment and applied Newton's third law to calculate the force of the bicep needed to keep the system at static equilibrium. And this is just a review of the analysis of a static equilibrium problem.